Hi, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I would like to show you how to call SageMaker APIs from a Jupyter Notebook running on your local machine. So this means you can work strictly on your local machine without using SageMaker Studio or uh, Notebook instances or anything else. So that's a convenient way to use your local environment. And this could be Jupyter, this could be your local IDE, whatever you prefer. Okay, let's get started. The first step is obviously to make sure you have a local environment with all the dependencies installed. And I guess the best way to do this is to use Conda. Uh, personally, I've tried using lots of different things on my Mac, virtual environments, etc. And I've always found that I bumped into dependency issues and you know that's going to waste a lot of time. So Conda is really the way to go as far as I'm concerned. So um, this is how you would set it up, right? So first, obviously, install the Anaconda distribution. Um, and you can quickly check that it's OK and that you're going to use the right Jupyter version. Uh, so if you don't see that you're going to use that uh, Anaconda Jupyter, check your uh, Unix path or, uh, or your path if you're using something else. Um, then you need to create a local Conda environment. So here I'm creating an environment called local SM local SageMaker with Python 3.7. I activate it and then I install um, some packages I'm going to need. So obviously pip, pandas and tensorflow and Keras, which is what I'm going to use in my notebook. Then you need to install the SageMaker SDK. You need to install it with pip because it's not uh, part of uh, Conda. Uh, and then we want to create our own uh, Jupyter kernel. So just make sure you install uh, IPy kernel and you can just create, uh, or I should say register your uh, Conda environment as a Jupyter kernel with that next command. Okay, so here that's still the local SM environment and I'm registering it as a, the local SM uh, kernel. Uh, you can use another name here if you want. And then of course, we can start Jupyter. Uh, and you need to make sure Docker is running on your local machine because as we will see, we're going to pull Docker containers from AWS. And so obviously we need Docker on for this. Okay. Okay, let's open Jupyter now. I will add a link to this notebook in the video description, of course. And this is a very simple Keras notebook and uh, here I want to focus on the few things that you need to update in your own notebooks so that you can run them locally on your machine. Okay, so th this isn't so much about Keras, it's really about those few things you need to change. So the first thing is which region are you going to run in? Because when you run on a notebook instance or when you run on SageMaker Studio, you know, you have a de facto region that you're using. Here it depends. So um, there are two ways uh, you can do this. The first one is just to use the usual SageMaker session and this will use the AWS region that is configured with the AWS CLI. Okay, so whatever you're using with the CLI, whatever you have in your uh, .AWS config file is what we will use here. If that's okay, uh, you, know, you have nothing to change. If you want to use another region, this is how you would do it, right? Uh, you can pass uh, a region name to the session. Okay, so that saves you from messing with your uh, CLI configuration. Okay, first thing to do, set the region. The second thing to do is take care of the role. Okay, because when we work in Studio or on a notebook instance, we do this. And we call that get execution role API, which returns the I am role associated to the notebook instance or to studio obviously here we're working locally so your local machine doesn't have an iron role and if you try and call this api it's going to fail so the solution is very simple you just have to pass the the arn of your iron role the one you're using uh, with SageMaker. okay so um, just make sure you pass the full arn and well, there's a simple way to find it. Let me show you if you're not sure. Okay, if you just go with your CLI, I am list roles and look for 
SageMaker execution. Oops. All right, you'll find the roles. So here I have a whole bunch of roles because over time uh, I've updated the roles, but um, this is what you want, right? This is the ARN. And here I'm, I've selected the ARN for the latest, uh, the latest role, okay, with all my latest tweaks, okay? But this is the one you want, the one that's probably called Amazon SageMaker execution role if you use the, the SageMaker wizards etc etc if it's called something else then of course use that name okay so second thing fix the role all right let's run this cell should be okay the next cell is just about uh you know fetching the data set nothing special here and saving the the training set and the validation set locally as you can see here i am using the fashion in this data set okay now, if you want to work locally, you know, you have to save your data on the local machine. Um, probably, you know, you want to do that. So you need to define the input path and uh, for both uh, set the training set and the validation set. OK, if your data is in S3, uh, that's fine. And of course, if you have uh, if you have a network connectivity, um, you can use S3 URIs, okay? Um, but if you want to work strictly locally, uh, you can do this, okay? Use that file, um, column slash slash uh, URI, and that's fine, okay? So here I'm pointing to the local directory called data where I have those two, um, two data sets, okay? And uh, next, I wanna define the location where I'm going to save the trained model. So here as well, you could pass an S3 URI, that's okay. Here, I'm just using a local path, okay? So third thing, point at the local data set and point at a local location to save the model, okay? Uh, now we're ready to train. So as usual, we'll uh, use the uh, SageMaker estimator for TensorFlow in this case, passing the script, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you should be used to this by now. And uh, the only thing you need to take care of is the instance type, right? Because here we want to train locally, not on a fully managed instance. So you can pass the instance type local if you want to train on local CPU. If you're, uh, if you're lucky to have a GPU, an NVIDIA GPU on your uh, machine, then you can use local GPU and, uh, and then the training job will run there, okay? So this is all we need to do. And now we can call fit. Okay, to get the training going. And of course, we need to pass the location of the training set, the validation set. And remember, these are, these are local. And this is where you want to make sure Docker is running because let's run this cell. Under the hood, um, the SageMaker SDK is going to pull the TensorFlow container to your local machine. Okay, so in this case, uh, we're going to pull TensorFlow 115 for CPU. Okay, so I've done this before. It's a it's a large image and uh, it takes uh, uh, a few minutes to to pull on my slow connection. Um, so training will start immediately here. But if I take a look, I can see. Okay, this image has been uh, has been pulled here, right? So that's why you need Docker running on the local machine. Okay, so training starts, and this is business as usual. We're using script mode, so we should see the script being invoked, right? Passing that uh, epochs hyperparameter, passing the local location where to save the model, and then it's a training uh, log, and it takes a minute or two maybe to train. So I'll pause the video and wait for training to complete. Okay, training is now complete and um, I can find my model in slash TMP slash model and I have the training artifact. And if I extract it, I see uh, it's been saved in TensorFlow serving format, which is now the, the standard format for TensorFlow models. And that's really all there is to it. 
Okay. So okay. So summing things up, um, you need conda. You need to set the region. You need uh, the I am role. Uh, you need obviously local data, right? Uh, you need local instance type. And you need Docker, right? And that's about it. So uh, as you can see, it's very, very easy to train strictly on your local machine. And of course, you're going to save money by not firing up uh, notebook instances or using Studio. You can strictly work locally. You can use your favorite tools, etc., etc., and still call AWS APIs. Uh, this is going to work with all the open source containers. So all the framework containers, TensorFlow, uh, MXNet, PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, XJBoost, etc., will work that way. Obviously, it's going to work with your own container. So if you bring your own containers to SageMaker, that's going to work. The only case it is not going to work is if you're using built-in algos, right? So if you're using uh, one of those 17 built-in algos in SageMaker, it's not going to work because those containers are not open source, okay? But in most cases, um, you, can, you can absolutely do that, okay? Well, that's it. Hope th this was useful. Um, feel free to ask questions, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye-bye.